Well, hello, Courier Nation. Welcome to the Deliver on Your Business podcast, where you are the boss. If you deliver for Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, or any of those others, this podcast is for you. They said you have to be an independent contractor, which makes you a business owner. We are here to help you think like one and claim your rights and your opportunities. Well, hey, Courier Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the Deliver on Your Business podcast. I hope it's been a great week for you. And uh, I don't know about you, but I can already start feeling that difference as you get into fall. You start Things just start to get busier for the most part because college students are, are back in school, so they're ordering more. And maybe part of it is because now they're not driving as a summer job or something like that. So that's kind of reducing some of the driver saturation. I don't know. And then there's football season because people love to order food for football games. And, uh, and I'm just excited about football season anyway. I'm, I'm a big football fan, and especially in college football. Can't wait to see another year get going. So Courier Nation, let's talk about Postmates today. You know, I wanted to get a look at each of the prominent delivery providers. There's Postmates, there's Grubhub, DoorDash, and Uber Eats. They are the dominant ones out there right now. And, and just to kind of get some overall insights on each of those. So this week, we're doing Postmates. Let's talk about them for a little bit. Now, Postmates, they're a pioneer in the delivery service. I believe they offered delivery even before Uber, DoorDash, or Grubhub. I don't think they've kept up with the growth like the major brands have. But, you know, and and there seems to be kind of a love-hate relationship with Postmates. I know there is with me. And, you know, you get some people that are extremely loyal, and there are others that just despise them. And, uh, you know, my question is that we want to ask ourselves as professionals is, is Postmates a good delivery option? So we're going to look at some of the different aspects for delivering for them. And I'll give some of my thoughts. But, you know, ultimately, I guess it kind of comes down to your own preferences and to what they are like in your own market. And uh, But I think each week I want to look at some of the same questions for each of these companies. And so, like I said, you know, we'll talk also, we'll do an episode on Grubhub and on DoorDash and on Uber Eats. And we're going to look at the same five major questions. How well do they pay? How does their app work? What are their deliveries like? Do they respect the independent contractor relationship? And what is their support like? So let's talk about some of this with Postmates. How is the pay for Postmates? Now, I do uh, have an article I posted recently that kind of describes their pay model, and I'll put a link in the show notes. But Postmates, along with Uber Eats, tend to get the most criticism from drivers because of the way that they pay. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that you don't get your tips right away with them. And uh, so I think this kind of comes maybe as some of it is with, you know, we're in a world of instant gratification. You want all that money right now. And with Postmates, the tips often don't show up for 24 hours or longer. Kind of depends on when the customer remembers to go back in. And so that can make the pay look a little bit smaller. And if the customers don't tip as often, um, and some of that comes down to customer service. Yeah, If your customer service is good, I think you can make good money with Postmates. But uh, um, if it's not as good, you probably don't make as much money. And uh, And... Honestly, I don't see a problem with that. So there are really three things to consider when you're talking about how any of these companies pay. There's the delivery fee or their base pay. There's the tipping. And then there are incentives and bonuses. So let's talk about the base pay, the delivery fee. I do think that uh, the delivery fee that comes from Postmates, that's the part that Postmates actually pays out, is probably better than... um, Grubhub or DoorDash anyway. Uh, Sometimes it's pretty close, uh, but of the four major carriers, I think they do the best for actually compensating you for your actual wait time. Um, Everybody else kind of factors estimated wait time, but Postmates does pay you for actual wait time. It's a real-time type of thing. So anyway, Postmates calculates their delivery fee on really four things. There is a set pickup fee. There's a set drop-off fee. There is a per minute rate. 
And then there is, and that's for wait time only. And then there is the mileage fee that they pay from the restaurant to the customer. So for example, in my market, there's a $1.40 pickup fee. And uh, now if you've got multiple orders from the same restaurant, there's just the one pickup fee. That's kind of how they do that. And then there's a drop-off fee. So 70 cents for each drop-off that you do. 7 cents per minute of waiting time and 64 cents per mile. Now, one thing about Postmates is that earlier this year, they had two different rate changes, um, all within just a few weeks of each other. And the total actually came out to about an 80, or I'm sorry, about a 20% decrease. Postmates used to have a $4 minimum. They did away with that. It was $4 minimum in my market anyway. They did away with that minimum because basically the way, the way they worded it is, well, because of uh, you know the improvements in our pay, you don't need that minimum anymore. Yeah, right. Well, uh, how, how does a decrease in pay mean you don't need that minimum, right? And, uh, but, you know, definitely I would say that prior to those cuts, I think they definitely did have the best overall delivery fees of any of the major players out there. And, and I'm talking about just comparing what is actually paid by Postmates compared to what's paid by Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, you know. Tipping with Postmates. Uh, tips are kind of a wild card with them. I found tipping is is a, a good differentiator between them and Uber Eats because I think they do a better job of encouraging. Uber Eats has been trying to catch up with that because I think they finally started to realize that if they do a better job with tipping, they don't have to pay out as much themselves. But customers, I think, tend to tip more than they do on Uber Eats. Um, I don't think they tip as much as they do on DoorDash or Grubhub, and that is because of when customers tip. Um, I think DoorDash and Grubhub have, have it figured out because you can tip when you place the order, and that's when people are used to placing a tip. If you have to go back after the fact, you know, people aren't thinking about that, and they may be less likely to go back into the app and tip. But that's how it works with Postmates is that customers tip after the delivery, and that can work for you. That can work against you. If your customer service is fantastic, I think you can do really well on tips. You know, I hear some people that say they never get tips and others that, uh, you know, I get tips almost all the time from Postmates customers. It's really actually kind of unusual that I don't. And so I don't know how much of that is market and how much of that is customer service. But uh, I personally, I kind of enjoy the challenge when I'm uh, delivering with Postmates because that tipping is kind of a little more dependent on your actual level of service, you know. The third area of payment has to do with incentives and bonuses. Now, Postmates does offer some incentives at times to encourage drivers to be out there. Um, the main one that they offer is they'll do what they call a guaranteed amount. And so if you complete so many deliveries, and it might be, you know, you, you complete – you know, for an example, eight deliveries in a particular four-hour period, and they'll give you a guaranteed $60. Or they might say, you know, you complete 55 deliveries in the week, and they guarantee that you're going to get $275 or whatever. Now, people will confuse those with a bonus. That doesn't mean you get that $60 on top. That means that all of your delivery fees will add up to at least $60. And if they don't, then Postmates will make up the difference. And my experience is usually that on those guarantees, once you add in tips, it's actually a pretty decent amount of pay. And so that's not a bad thing. But here's the deal on those guarantees. I do not trust Postmates. This is my personal opinion. Uh, but I've just had too many times where I decide I'm going to go ahead and chase one of those guarantees and uh, usually kind of a busy evening and I'll kind of put everybody else off to the side and go after it because I know that if I make that guarantee, I make more money than I make with anybody else. And let's say it's a it's an eight delivery guarantee and I complete seven deliveries and then for the next 45 minutes that are left, I never get a delivery. And uh, 
you know, I can't prove it, but it definitely feels like a bait and switch to me where they use the guarantee to get you out there, but then they're going to avoid paying out if they can. So they'll quit sending in deliveries or something rather than pay you that guarantee. Like I said, I can't prove it, but I've heard of enough other people that do that, that I just, I don't trust them. I've learned that I am not going after a guarantee if that's the only thing I'm doing with Postmates because I'm I'm just too suspicious that they're going to pull some kind of crap on me. You know what I mean? And so that's that's one of those things I don't like about Postmates. But uh, now there are some other times that they will offer some things like they'll add a per order bonus. Um, and especially that happens with particular restaurants or particular places like 7-Eleven and uh, P.F. Chang's have been a couple of them in my market where they'll add sometimes a one or two dollar bonus or sometimes as much as six or eight dollars extra. Uh, There are times that they will do a multiplier when things are really busy within a certain area. So, you know, a 1.25 or 1.5, which basically means like on a 1.25, a four dollar delivery, now they're going to pay five dollars, things like that. And uh, I've heard of some drivers that they receive uh, what Uber Eats would call a quest, where if you complete so many deliveries, they give you a bonus. But I've never had that happen in my market, and I don't know if they're doing it as much anymore, but that is another type of thing. So sometimes, I mean, like everybody else, they will throw out some guarantees, and they can be good. And I've had a few times where I've made some pretty good money because of those guarantees. And then there are times where it's backfired. And ultimately, the problem I have with guarantees with Postmates is I just don't trust them. Okay, so let's talk about the Postmates app now. You know, what? how does that work? And uh, the first thing I want to look at with that is the information that is provided when you get a delivery offer. And right now, I think I probably put them about third out of four as far as the information they provide. Um, I don't think that they do as good as Grubhub or DoorDash. And and this is all very subjective. It's my opinion. But when you're evaluating to take an offer, whether or not to accept the offer, the more information they provide, the better. But one of the biggest criticisms is with Postmates that a lot of people have is you don't get a bank payout or you don't get a payout amount. You know, they don't tell you this offer is going to pay you $4 or $12 or something like you get with a couple of the others. Honestly, I think it's impossible for them to do that. And part of that is because, you know, one, they do pay on some real-time information, which is particularly the wait time at the restaurant. And the other thing is that the tips come after the fact. So you, it's it's impossible for them to know what your pay is going to be. And honestly, folks, you should be able to kind of estimate yourself what you think that pay will be just based on the information that shows up on the map. Because on the map, they do show a drop off or, you know, the the pickup location and where it's dropping off. So you should be able to look at that and get a pretty good idea of what you think that's going to pay. Although one thing I will say is that they recently redesigned the app. And I think on the new design, it's harder to see the details on the map. It's like the colors blend in a little more with the background. So it's a little harder to tell on the fly just where you're going. But I have two major complaints about the information that they do provide or don't provide. One is they don't provide customer details at all other than a spot on the map on the offer screen. But after you accept the order, you can't really see as much and you don't know the address. And I think, you know, a couple of the other apps have spoiled us because once you've accepted, you can actually look up the customer address. But you can't tell any of that information until after you've picked up the food from the restaurant. And the other problem I have with Postmates has to do with the fact that you don't know when you get an offer whether or not that is an order that you have to place the order. And that's that's an issue on the delivery side with Postmates is some orders you have to actually place the order and wait. And you don't know, after a while, you can kind of gather intelligence by just experience that, oh, yeah, this restaurant, usually you've got to do that. But you don't know that information ahead of time. And to me, that order in place is a deal breaker in a lot of cases. But those are the things as far as the information they provide. Functionality on the app, because I think with all of these apps, sometimes you've got to ask, does it work well? And I've never experienced an outage with Postmates. 
I, it's not to say it hasn't happened, but I've never experienced it or even really seen any times that I've noticed on forums people saying, hey, the app is down. Uh, that is an issue with a couple of the others. But I do have some frustrations because sometimes I'll get an offer and it starts chiming at me. I accept or decline and the phone continues to chirp with that notification sound. It's like it didn't quite say, hey, quit sending that chirp out. And I've had to, times I had to go in and force stop the app. It's an irritation, but for the most part, I found their app to be fairly stable, at least compared to a couple of others. So let's talk about the deliveries with Postmates. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the worst thing about Postmates on their deliveries is that they have a high percentage of deliveries where you have to place the order and wait for the food. Uh, they're starting to do also a lot more where you've got to go to a grocery store or the iTunes store and you have to go and do the shopping. And 7-Eleven some, not as much lately. But, you know, when time is money, that's a deal breaker for me because when they're paying seven cents a minute, guys, that's $4.20 an hour for your wait time at the restaurant. That's not enough to compensate you for the time that you're waiting. And, uh, you know, really, it's only if the potential tip is big enough to make it worth that time. If it's fast food, I don't mind because usually I can get that food pretty quickly. But if it's a restaurant where it's going to take 45 minutes, no, I'm not placing the order. I'm moving on. And because uh, waiting 40 minutes at four bucks an hour is just unacceptable. Now, I do find that Postmates tends to be pretty efficient compared to most of the others. Um, at least on prepaid orders. Uh, they have done something right in that uh, I think it was you know, probably even an adjustment pretty recently where I'm less likely to have to wait for a prepaid order than I am for anybody else. Usually if it's not an order and pay, I know that I can get that food and I can get out of there and not have to wait around. And so with Postmates orders, my experience in my market is I can get those orders done faster than I can just about anybody else. And that alone can make them profitable for me. I find that their dispatching is fair. You know, it's there's a lot of ridiculous orders when there's no way that I'm driving that far for a potential $3 payout. But I think that's going to be true on any of these platforms because it's all computerized. And at the same time, I'll get the same offer several times after I've rejected it. And that gets irritating. But I think for the most part, they're fairly good at offering orders that can be quick and efficient. And I like them from a multi-apping standpoint because they can be a good filler because of those efficient, quick orders. And when it comes to multiple orders, you know, or the, sometimes you call them stacked orders, uh, Postmates can be a blessing and a curse. My experience is that they're efficient in how they lay them out so that you're not going, you know, a long way one direction and then turning around and taking the second order the opposite direction too far. They're usually pretty good about laying them out all together. So that's good. Their pay isn't great because their pay on multiple orders is all based on just uh, distance from one spot to the next. And that's not worth it. But if the tips are good on those orders, it is worth it okay. And and you can get things done efficiently. Multiple orders can be great if you are chasing one of those guarantees. So here's a huge problem, though, with multiple orders on Postmates, and it has to do with their party option. Postmates has a feature where they do, they call it the party and if somebody's already placed an order at a restaurant, then other people can place orders from that same restaurant for no delivery fee. And what they do is they stack those deliveries. And, and the worst part about that is, is that let's say you accept an order from a restaurant and all of a sudden it will say one order or two orders have been added to your route. This is a huge problem because they don't give you the option to reject the order. They just add it on. And that's, the, I think, honestly, a huge violation of the whole independent contractor relationship. We'll get into that into them in a minute. But I think that is a problem. And you cannot individually or selectively unassign a delivery in a stacked order. If, if you don't like what they did, you have to cancel the whole thing. And uh, now they did add some functionality in their latest release where you can see a little better 
where those second and third orders are, but you can't change the order. It's to me, it's a huge issue on the delivery side of things. And that, well, you know what, that that just leads into a good topic then, and that is, do they respect the independent contractor relationship? And we'll get into that again here in just a moment. But you've probably heard me say this from time to time about all these gig companies, that they are scum because of the way they use independent contractors. And uh, some are worse than others. I'd say Postmates is probably somewhere in the middle. But um, I think they give... I think they give you as an independent contractor a lot more freedom in a lot of ways. They don't try to rope you into any schedules. Uh, You don't have to sign up for a schedule to get a better opportunity at orders. They don't put pressure on you about acceptance rates. They don't even display your acceptance rate. Uh, It really seems to be a non-issue. Now, I've heard some rumors that sometimes they'll slow down the offers they give you if you don't accept so many orders. I've never really experienced that that I've noticed, or maybe I just don't use them enough to have noticed. I don't know. But either way, I don't feel pressure from them to accept a certain number of orders or anything. But I do see a couple of main problems with them. And the big one is that stacked orders. They do not give you the opportunity to reject that second, third, or fourth order and I think that's a very clear, very blatant violation of the contract, independent contractor relationship. And, and it's especially a problem because with Postmates, canceling orders is one of the biggest things that can get you deactivated. So what they do is they throw on all these orders you can't accept or reject. And if you cancel after they do that, you put yourself at risk of being de- deactivated from the platform. I think the other thing is when they don't give you the information about whether that's an order and pay, they don't give you the information you need about whether or not this is a good order to accept or reject. I think that's kind of a problem too. And again, that also relates to that cancellation issue because if I get somewhere and then I find out or I accept an order and then I find out I've got to place an order and it's going to be a 45 minute wait, again, I put myself at risk if I decide, yeah, that's not worth it. And so Those are the main things I think that are issues as far as the independent contractor relationship. The last question is, how is there support? And I would just ask you, what support? Seriously, folks, this is, in my experience, a big problem with Postmates. If you've got an issue with delivery, it's hard to figure out a place you can go. The options on the app are very limited. There's a number that you can call. 888-815-7726. I'm going to put that out there. But from what I understand, I think it's supposed to actually be a merchant support number, but a lot of people can call in when they're at the restaurant, especially if there's an issue with an order. But in, in too many ways, you're on your own. There's a lot less of an option and a lot less information about how to get that support And I think Postmates is probably the worst of all the apps as far as the support that they provide. So let me summarize, I guess, my overall impressions on Postmates. First, I see them as more of an arrow in the quiver. Now, some of this maybe has to do more with my market because they're not as busy. Um, I will tell you one thing, and I think this uh, actually surprised the heck out of me when I started tracking all of this, is that on an order per order basis, Postmates actually pays as high, if not higher, as far as profit per hour for me. That surprised me, but I think it's because of the short and efficient deliveries that when I do get more of the prepaid orders, they can actually be pretty profitable. And if they were busier, they would probably be a bigger part of my business. But I've got three really big problems with Postmates. Order and pay, uh, it's just incredibly inefficient. And I think Asking you to wait for an order and only giving you $4 an hour for that time that you're doing that, that's just unacceptable. Their practice of adding orders on without your permission is a huge issue for me. And the third thing is their lack of support. And these come together, I think that they would prevent Postmates from ever being my primary option. Um... And, and the way that they're structured, uh, the because of the stuff about, you know, the order and pay issues 
And because of the multiple options, I am going to cancel more orders. Now, some people would say you don't have a problem if you don't cancel, you know, take an order, accept it and and run with it. But I think because there's not as much information and uh, with especially when there are orders that they just add to me without my permission, there, there are times that it's just, okay, I don't have time to take that second order right now, you know, or it's just a matter of principle. You did not ask me, I'm canceling the whole thing. And I know I, I would have trouble being confident with Postmates just because I know that my tendency to cancel is going to put me at risk of being suspended because uh, that's a big issue with Postmates is that they are probably more likely to deactivate your account because of cancellations. And my cancellation rates with Postmates are higher than they are with anybody else. And it's because of the way that they are structured. So for me and the way that I do things and with, uh, I, I think, kind of the things that I really push as far as your efficiency, your profit per hour, if you're going to be profitable per hour with Postmates, you've got to cancel some of the orders that they give you. Uh, that's just I, the way that I see it. And I think that may not make it a great option for some people. Uh, if you followed some of the things that I do, it could probably put you at risk for deactivation with Postmates. So that is an issue. Now, is Postmates as bad as some people make them out to be? I don't think so. But you know, here's the deal. Like I said before, they're all scum. They're all liars and thieves. And they all also prevent opportunities. And I think you can make business decisions based on what works best for you. You may have some different approaches and Postmates is going to be a better fit for you because of that. But your market, your preferences, they're going to be different than mine. But I think overall, they can be a good tool, a good option. I don't think they're as bad as a lot of people say. I do think, and, and I have experience, and I got the numbers to prove that, at least for me, they actually pay better than a lot of people realize that they do. But again, that has to do with being selective with them. So I'd say don't listen to the hype, either the good or the bad. Give them a fair shot. Learn the positives. Work within them. You find out how they work for you. Beware of the negatives so that you can avoid them. But they can add to your overall profitability. They can be a good option depending on you, depending on your market, depending on your approach. So Courier Nation, I do want to thank you for tuning in and for joining us today. Come on over to the website and check us out. You can scroll through the previous posts there. Uh, you can get in the show notes a link to today's episode. Deliveronyourbusiness.com, that will take you right to our podcast page, but it will also give you access to the rest of the website, which is uh, entrecourier.com, where you can see some of the other information that we put on a much more regular basis. Now, we've had a lot going on lately on social media. The past two weeks, we started putting out a daily business tip of the day, and we've been uh, posting those on Instagram and YouTube. They're just short little one to two minute clips. And, and in fact, while I'm talking about that, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. You know, let me know what you think. I've thought about posting the audio from those clips on the podcast. And so it'd be very different than the weekly episode that we're doing right now, where it's just a little one or two minute clip. But do you think that that would be a good way to go? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Can you send me an email, ron at entrecourier.com, or if you can go to our contact page at deliveronyourbusiness.com, click on contacts and you can email me. You can leave a voice message. You can go to the post on our blog that is related to this, and I'll have that in the show notes. And let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment in the post there because I'd love to get your thoughts on that because I've thought about doing a couple of different things, you know, with that little one minute clip, that uh, one to two minute clip. Would that be good to have as part of the Deliver on Your Business podcast? Do I do like some people do and kind of create a secondary podcast that is just those little one-minute things? Or do I just leave it as it is where they're on YouTube, Instagram? I, again, I'd love your feedback. And, and in fact, I'd love your feedback on anything to do with the podcast, the website, or anything. Any questions, ideas, comments, those are gold to me. Now, folks... You can always find us on social media at Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. All you got to do is just search for the username Entree Courier on all of those. And as I always do, this is the part I kind of save for the end because 
I want to make sure that I'm actually providing useful content and earning the right to ask this question. But if you have found anything useful in the podcast and the website and any of the social media, the information that we're putting out, could you spread the word, please? Could you let other drivers, uh, couriers know about us? And uh, if you could share us on social media, if you could leave a review at iTunes, or now I guess it's Apple Podcasts. I think it sounded so much more cool to call it iTunes, but uh, they've kind of changed the name now on the podcast site. If you could leave a review, though, those reviews help us get found. And if you can spread the news, we can help more people succeed in their business. One last thing that I ask you, Courier Nation, go out there, take control of your business, go and be the boss.